Hello everyone. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about vectors. This is a part of applied linear structures for computing. So in general, when we finish the vectors, we expect to know the definition of vectors, vector addition and scalar vector multiplication, transpose operators and inner product of vectors, norm and distances, the angle between vectors, dependence and independence of vectors, bases and orthonormal vectors. All right, so let's start with the definitions. The goals of this part is first to understand the definitions of following concepts and see some examples of each of them. First, we go over vector representation where we want to see how we can represent and define a vector. Then we talk about vector dimension. We want to see how we can measure the length of a vector. We then talk about vector equality, which helps us to compare two or more than two given vectors. Then we talk about block vectors. Then we talk about some specific cases of vectors, which are widely used, such as zero vectors, ones vectors, and unit vectors. Then we talk about sparsity of vectors. All right, so here's the vector representation. A vector is an ordered list of elements that are either real or complex. So actually in our scenario, in our examples, the elements are going to be numbers. So they are either real or complex. But vectors could include any type of element. They could include Greek letters. They could include name of objects because vectors are a way of storing data. So vectors are denoted by bolded lowercase letters such as X. For example, vector X is equal to and then we have the elements of this vector. As I said, the elements could be numbers, one, four, minus eight, 2.5. Also the elements of the vector, let's call the second one vector y, could be alpha, beta, minus four, book. So the elements could have different types of natures, different, uh, different, uh, natures. For example, let's define another vector. Mm, let's say we want to store the capacity of different computers. So I would say 128 GB, 64 GB, 1 terabyte, 512 GB. So this could be also a vector. The numbers in the list are called components or elements and are denoted by the same letter, non bolded with a subscript based on its position on the list. For example, in this vector that we have here, vector X has elements 6, 9, minus 5, and 0. 6 is the first element, so X1, X sub 1, or element 1 of this vector is equal to 6. 9 is the second element, so x sub 2 is 9. And this means this vector belongs to the, the four-dimensional real space, which is represented by R, which is simple of, a symbol of uh, real, real numbers, power 4. Next, we talk about vector dimensions. Vectors have a length called, vector have a length called its dimension. So dimension of vector x is equal to n. It means n is a natural number that shows the number of elements in that vector. Equivalently, given the dimension n, we can say x belongs to the real, the n-dimensional real space. Dimension of a vector is defined as the number of elements or components of the vector. So let's define a vector x is equal to 4 minus 2, 1, 0, minus 12. 
So what's the dimension of this vector? One, two, three, four, five. So dimension of vector x is equal to five. All right. Vector of size n is called an n vector. For example, here, vector x is an five vector. Numbers are called scalars. So the numbers which are in vector x, if they are uh, if they are natural numbers, they are called the scalars. A sub i represents element i of vector a. For example, let's define vector a to be only two elements, minus 11, 23. So the first element of this vector is minus 11. The second element of this vector is 23. For an n vector, i goes from 1 to n. For example, here, we have this n vector, which means a is a two vector. So for a two vector, what we have? a i, where i is from 1 to 2, which means we have only a1 and a2. Just a side note, sometimes a sub i uh, refers to uh, vector i in a list of given vectors. So let's say we have a1 is equal to 1, 2, 3. A2 is equal to 4, 5, 6. A3 is equal to 8, 9, 10. So A1 is a vector itself, A sub 2 is a vector itself, and A sub 3 is a vector itself. But usually when we use lowercase letters, which are not bold, it means there are elements of this vector. This is the notation that we are going to use uh, in the rest of this uh, lecture series. All right. Next, vector equality. So the definition of equality, vectors A and B are equal if and only if they have the same dimension, such as N, and also for all i from 1 to n, we have a sub i is equal to b sub i. So what if and only if means, it means it's a two directional statement. So these vectors are equal, then we can conclude that they have the same dimension and all the elements of the corresponding elements are equal. And the other way, if two vectors have the same dimension and their dimension is n, and also for all of the values of i from one to n, the corresponding elements of these vectors are equal, then these two vectors are equal. Let's look at some examples. So example one tells us vector a is equal to 1, 85, 10, and vector b is equal to 1, 85, minus 5. These two vectors are not equal. Let's evaluate the two conditions. First, their dimension. Dimension a is equal to 3. Dimension of b is also equal to 3. So their dimension is equal. What does that mean? That means we check the first condition. Let's look at the second condition. The second condition tells me i from 1 to 3, a i should be equal to b i. Let's check. So a1 is equal to 1 is equal to b1. a2 is equal to 87, which is equal to b2. And a sub 3 is equal to 10, which is not equal to minus 5, which is b2, b3. So A3 is not equal to B3. So these two vectors are not equal. The next example, vectors A 
which its elements are 18 and 0, and B, which its elements are 18 and 0, are equal. The reason is they have the same dimension. Dimension of A is equal to dimension of B is equal to 2. And also, A1 is equal to B1 is equal to 18. A2 is equal to B2 is equal to 0. So these two vectors are equal. Next example, vectors A, which includes 23, 8, minus 3, 11, and B, which includes 9 and 7, are not equal because they have different dimensions. In other words, dimension of vector A is 4, and dimension of vector B is 2. So 2 is not equal to 4. So these two vectors are definitely not equal. Block vectors. Assume that A, B, and C are three given vectors with dimensions x, y, and z. We can consider a stacked vector or concatenation of vectors A, B, and C and represent it as D equal to A, B, C. So vector D is also called a block vector with block elements of vector A, vector B, and vector C. So each of these are vectors themselves. Vector, vector, vector. And the dimension of this block vector D is sum of dimensions of each of these vectors. What's the reason for that? Because vector A has X elements, vector B has Y elements, and vector C has Z elements. So if we sum them up, it gives us dimension of Dimension of D is dimension of this, which is X plus Y plus Z. Before we move on, I want to uh, tell something about the representation to clarify it here. Let me clear here. All right. So as we said, we can represent, let's say vector A is equal to A1, A sub 2, A sub 3, and A sub X. So it has x number. Another way of representing vector a is a is equal to a sub 1, comma, a sub 2, comma, and a sub x. So these two representations are equivalent. In other words, a is equal to minus 1, 0, 4. This is equivalent to minus 1, comma, 0, comma, this is just a matter of representation, how we represent vectors. Next, uh, we talked about some specific types of vectors. First, zero vector. An n vector with all entries equal to zero is denoted by zero sub n or just zero, and it's called a zero vector. For example, vector x, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is a zero vector, and we can also represent it by 0, sub 4. One vector, an n vector with all entries n is denoted by bold 1, sub n, or just 1. So just a quick note, also for the zero vector, this uh, zero value should be, this zero should be in bold numbers. All right, so let's see an example of the one vector, x is equal to one, 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 one. So this is a one vector of dimension five. Unit vector, a unit vector is a vector of length one. We are going to define length later, but uh, another example of unit vector, a unit vector with elements i equal to 1 is represented by e sub i. So if only one element of a unit vector is 1, all of the rest of the elements should be 0 to make sure that the length of that vector is equal to 1. We are going to see that in the illustrative representation of vectors. So if I want to just quickly show in the two-dimensional space, 
So let's say this is x1, x2. So let's say you show vector x as x sub 1, x sub 2. So if it's 1 and 0, it means x1 is 1, x2 is 0. So this is your vector. If it's 0 and 1, something like this. So this is 0, 1, this is 1, 0. And as you can see, the length of both of these vectors is equal to 1. So these are specific examples of uh, unit vectors. So something which is popular and is uh, widely used is EIs. So for example, uh, for some unit vectors of size 4, they include E1 equal to 1, 0, 0, 0. E2, E sub 2 is equal to 0, 1, 0, 0. E sub 3 is equal to 0, 0, 1, 0. E sub 4 is equal to 0, 0, 0, 1. Right. Sparsity of vectors. So a sparse vector is a vector if it has uh, it, uh, most of its entries are zero. A sparse vector provides some advantages in computing. They can be stored and manipulated efficiently on a computer. For example, vector x, 0 0.5, this is an example of a sparse vector. All right. Uh, we use this notation n n z to represent the number of non-zero elements or entries of vector x. For example, for this given vector x, number of non-zero elements of x is equal to one two. two. We have two elements. This means vector x has two non-zero elements. Why do you use examples of sparse vectors are zero vectors and unit vectors? As we discussed, zero vectors, all elements are zero. So number of non-zero elements of zero vectors is zero. And unit vectors also can have lower number of non-zero elements. All right. In this lecture, we talked about Vectors, the definition of vectors. We said how we represent a vector with its elements x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub n. Then we said that dimension of vector x is the number of elements in that vector. In this case, it's n. How we represent each element of vector x, x sub i, where i goes from 1 to n. We talked about equality of two vectors A and B. Vectors A and B are equal if and only if dimension of A is equal to dimension of B is equal to N. And all elements of A and B are equal for I from one to N. We talked about block vectors. Let's say vector A which is a combination of some other vectors. So its elements are vectors themselves. Uh, and also we talked about some specific types of vectors, zero vectors, zero n is equal to zero, zero, zero. And there are n of these. We talked about one's vector, which all its elements, or one, and we talked about unit vectors where their length is equal to one. We are going to talk about length later, but one example of unit vectors are vectors that only one of their elements is one and all the other elements are zero. 